the tennis team clearing courts and getting ready to play outdoors. This show promises to be a hit with you, and that will make everyone happy. A snowy backdrop didn't prevent Andrew Argeros and his teammates from competing in this one. Record one more out in the dome. Sports Night is next. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sports Night in Sports. I'm Joe Yund, and spring has finally sprung. And I'm Howie Shapiro, and yes, it has. We finally, uh, most of the snow is gone. Hopefully, teams will be getting outdoors soon. Hopefully, maybe even as soon as this week. Well, I know that uh, baseball practice went outside on Monday of this week. Uh, they're hoping to have games Thursday, Friday, Saturday yes. uh, to get the season started. And they're going to start, hopefully, keep our keeping our fingers crossed, with a couple of games right here on CTN. They're at Centennial on Thursday. And Howie? We'll be there. They're at Maple Grove on Friday. And Howie? We won't be there. And then they're at home against Edina on Saturday afternoon. And Howie? We'll be there! All right. And, uh, yeah, very excited to, to get uh, everybody going. A uh, couple of teams, as you saw in the in the intro, already getting some yep. some competitions in. But it's really only been the two teams, the softball and the tennis team, uh, that have gotten going. But hopefully everybody else will be able to get going this week. Looks like the weather is going to cooperate. We're looking at, at uh, days with a lot of sun and temperatures in the in the mid to upper 60s. Yeah, we should be able to get ball in this week, and, and it's going to be great. And I know I know the teams are itching to get outside. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the softball team didn't have to wait for the fields to clear before getting its season started. They've already played four games now, thanks to having access to an indoor facility. On Thursday, the Cardinals opened their season against conference rival Spring Lake Park at the Dome in West St. Paul. Both teams hoping for a fast start to the schedule, despite the slow arrival of spring weather. Not exactly ideal to be playing with the mid-April blizzard. This definitely beats postponing and more practicing in the field house. Panthers pounce early, top of the first inning. Mackenzie Stone takes Sam Lom pitch deep to left with a couple of runners on. Three-run shot helps Spring Lake Park to a 4-0 lead in the first. Cardinals get one back in the bottom half. Runners at the corners with one out. Meg Sheck with a weak roller to the pitcher, but the throw is low and skips away. Kennedy Kerr slides in with the first run of the year for Coon Rapids. Bottom of the second now. Runners at first and second. Lom lines it to the left field corner. Turns on the Jets. Carls and Schmalzer score. And Lom is in standing with a two-run triple that evens the game at four apiece. Third inning still tied. Julia Byrne with a high fly ball to right center. She's out, but Sheck will tag and score from third on the sacrifice, give the Cardinals a lead. Next batter is Aliyah Johnson, and good night. She sends a bomb to straightaway center. Solo shot makes it 6-4. to four. Cardinals add three more in the inning. A five-run third propels them to the 9-4 win in the season opener. I was actually working out in that area that, on Thursday. I went out and stopped, caught a couple of innings, and I got to see uh, Johnson's, uh, Eli Johnson's bomb, and it was. She hit a shot to dead straightaway center field. It was nice to see. It was nice to see them, after falling behind, come back and dominating that game. Well, they've got some big bats in the lineup, as you will see as we move through the remainder of the highlights. But uh, the long ball will be definitely in play for this year's Cardinal squad. Well, the Cardinals were back at the Dome on Saturday to play a pair of games, including their first non-conference action against Chicago Lakes. The Wildcats are the defending champions from the Mississippi 8 Red and returned much of the roster that posted a 16-4 record last season. They would definitely challenge the Cardinals and give them a chance to see how good they really were early on. No score in this one until the bottom of the third. Abby Graham with a high fly to left center. It's just out of the reach of Madison Thornburg. Sam Lom will score from second, get the Coon Rapids Cardinals on the board first. We're tied at one in the fifth, a big two-out hit for Sago Lakes, Gina Verga. Down the line to right, they'll score runners from first and second, give the Wildcats their first lead of the game. Well, I'll tell you what, it also gave them some momentum. And they're gonna use it. Next batter with a grounder through the left side, they'll score Verga from second. Chisago scores five in the inning and leads 6-1. Cards trying to answer in the bottom half. Sam Lom jumps on the fastball, drills it to center. A double for 99. That'll get Cameron Schmalzer across the plate. It's still a 6-2 deficit. Nice shot there. Get the, get the run. The Wildcat bat, they, well, they blow up again in the sixth. Jade Gomez on to pitch, and Verga takes her deep. A two-run shot to right center. Part of a six-run inning. Chisago Lakes on their way to a 13-4 win. They're a pretty good softball club. 
Yeah, and, and that I think is a is a great opportunity for the Cardinals really to go up against right. a good quality club early on uh, and kind of see where they are. Uh, it also, you know, shows them early on how to deal with the adversity, uh, a, a lopsided loss. Uh, how do you recover? No time to uh, to dwell on it because they were playing again on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, they were. So you just have to put it behind them and go to the next game and start from there. Second half of their doubleheader on Saturday, the Cardinals matched up against conference rival Irondale. The Knights finished at the bottom of the Northwest Suburban standings last season, opened their schedule with a 10-0 loss to Maple Grove on Friday. Cardinals were determined to keep the Knights down and get themselves back on track at the same time. Coon Rapids wastes no time getting the offense going. Abby Graham rolls this one back through the middle. Cameron Schmalzer will round and score from second, get the Cardinals on the board. Still in the first inning, Meg Sheck with a hot shot to short. It's going to be bobbled. Sam Lom scores from third. No chance for a play. Everybody's safe. Jade Gomez at the plate now with two in scoring position. She finds a hole in left field. Sheck and Julia Byrne will score. Cardinals up 5-0 after the first inning. More scoring in the second. Abby Graham lifts this one to straightaway center, and it's not coming back. Her solo shot puts Cardinals up by seven. That's enough as they go on to a 9-5 to five win. Now you talked about bats, and, and they're really hitting the ball well this year, obviously, you know, scoring a number of runs, and that's what they want to see. They feel that they're, they have a couple of good pitchers. You know, they can continue to get run production. They're, they're going to be exciting to watch this season. I mean, I, I can't wait for our first game to, to televise for to get a chance to see that squad. Well, and we've got more long balls to talk about. We We're do. only four games into I know. the season. Oh, it's crazy. It's, uh, they, they're putting them out because uh, they hit two more uh, today. Elia Johnson, her second home run of the season, a three-run shot. Jade Gomez, a two-run shot. And Elia threw a new hit, no-hitter to get the win. Cardinals with a victory, 11-1. to uh, They are now 3-1 and one on the season. Yes, yeah, so, uh, certainly nice job, Eve, for, at least for one, that. At least one, one home run every game. That's not, that's not bad. That'll, that'll do. It's like you back in the day. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, the Cardinals uh, keep rolling. They've got a lot of a lot of games that they're getting to squeeze in right away. They're at Tatino Grace on Wednesday. They're at Centennial on Thursday, um, and I think they have games Friday, Saturday too. Um, everybody playing a lot. The tennis team, who we're, who we're going to talk about now, actually playing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then having a tournament on Saturday. Yeah, you know, and I, I was looking through Baseball Hub, and I, I looked at the Centennials week that uh, you know the, that the Cardinals are playing on Thursday. They're playing every game this week too. They'll see how many games everybody can get in. But the, you know, certainly the baseball team are going to get their first action here shortly, hopefully. Well, it took a lot of work to get the tennis team ready to host Spring Lake Park last Friday, and they were just not talking about practice. Coach Scott Stork spent a lot of hours out shoveling off the courts, hoping to get them ready. The players were out clearing snow a couple of different days. Even some students helped in order to earn their community service hours. And by Friday afternoon, the Bob Pivot courts were ready to play. Only in Minnesota do you see a tennis team still shoveling the courts just an hour before their match start. But that's what the Cardinals were doing on Friday. The CTN crew was there to highlight the top singles and doubles matchups. At first singles, Andrew Argeros facing Spring Lake Park's Matt Aboro. Argeros had a strong ground game, but not enough to overcome the strong service of Ari Bowl. Argeros loses in straight sets 0-6, 2-6. And uh, he certainly was a, a good tennis player, and Andrew could not uh, get it to his game that he needed. Liam Speltz and Tyler Hewitt in the far court for the Cardinals at first doubles. Good approach to the net for the winner here by Hewitt. Spelton and Hewitt also lost in straight sets, but they performed much better in the second, bouncing back from a 6-1 loss in the first and losing the second in a tiebreaker. They lost the match by a score of 1-6, 6-7, but really fought back in that second set well, just couldn't get over the hump. Yeah, and the rest of the, the, rest of the lineup struggled against uh, Spring Lake Park they as well. Uh, they got just one win against the, um, against the Panthers, that one coming at four singles, Nick Yang. Uh, getting the win for the Cardinals. There you see the rest of the finishes. And uh, Kerman Arutena Edme lost 06 2 6. Caden Carey, a closer loss at third singles, losing 3 6 4 6. Nick Yang gets that one win and in impressive fashion 6 2 6 1. Uh, Derek Avery and Austin Hansen lose at second doubles 1 6 0 6. And A.J. Pauley and Nick Terabeza lose 0626 
so a, a tough, a tough matchup against Spring Lake Park. But uh, you know, this is a really young team. It is. Uh, it's going to be a building and a learning season yep. for uh, the Cardinals. And when you look at their lineup, uh, you have uh, Argeros at the top as a senior. And that's it. You got a lot of freshmen and sophomores on, on this lineup, so uh, give this team a, a year or two, and they're going to be they're going to be much more competitive. Excellent opportunity for these young players to to really find out what kind of game they have, and and really it's an excellent opportunity for Coach Coach Stork to see what he has kind of juggle that lineup as the season continues, and, and and see where these players end up at what positions. Well, and a lot of things could change as we talked about the last couple of weeks on Sports Night. Like 45 kids in the tennis program, and Coach Stork is keeping them all and finding matches Great. for them. Um, so, you know, with that many numbers, uh, the cream will rise to the top and, will. and watch this program uh, over the next couple of years should be very exciting. Cardinals back in action on Monday, welcoming the Andover Huskies to the court. Another difficult test for this very young squad. They're getting a lot of experience very quickly as the schedule is now on hyperspeed to get as many matches in as possible because it'll be tournament time before you know it. We start with first singles. Andrew Argeros in the near court for the Cardinals. Beautiful day to be on the courts. And Argeros getting his game back in shape as well. He gets the straight sets win, 6-3, 6-2. And over one at second singles. We move to the third spot where Nick Yang taking care of business for the home team. Yang wins a nail biter, 6-2, 6-7, 10-5 in the tiebreaker. Fourth singles, Caden Carey returning serve for the Cardinals, and he'll get the point on the miss hit. Carey gets another win for the Cardinals, 6-4, 7-5. Unfortunately, the Andover's double lineup was just too strong. Nick Terabeza and A.J. Pauley fall in straight sets, losing 0-6, 2-6. Huskies win all three doubles matches to score the 4-3 victory. Tough loss at 4-3. We, we talked about it last year. I believe, I believe, I think it may have been the girls had a lot of 4-3 losses, and, and those are tough ones because the, they, you know, things swing one way or another. It can go a different way. Easily, and, and it, you know, that, that kind of loss is uh, one I think, you know, we talk about that young program and uh, a lesson to be learned from that loss is you're this close. Uh, a lot of these guys are, are still pretty new to the game. Uh, and will improve dramatically through over the course of just the next couple weeks during the the uh, uh, season here. Yep. Uh, and if they continue to, uh, as Coach Storick hopes, fall in love with the sport, play a lot of tennis over the summer, come back, um, and again, be uh, interesting. you know, they, those four three losses can easily become four three wins. Uh, Cardinals were taking on Anoka today. They're at Champlain Park on Wednesday. I don't know what their schedule is Thursday, Friday, but I know they're playing Thursday, Friday, and they have a tournament on Saturday. So they'll be very busy. Eight matches uh, in six days. Track team uh, getting its season started today in Roseville with an invitational there. On Friday, the St. Thomas uh, invitational for the boys team. Uh, Hamlin Elite meet. Uh, is also on Friday, and that's got to be kind of an interesting one. Usually, uh, the organizers of that, it's an invite-only tournament. Usually, they've got, you know, three, four, five uh, competitions to look at scores for and times from and heights and uh, distances. Not so much this nope. year. So, uh, who gets invited uh, be could, be, could be very interesting. So, uh, we'll hope to, to have some results for track next week. Boys golf team. Uh, <laughs> Very tough to find a course that, that is open <laughs> at this point. Uh, just, uh, you know, less than 10 days after 18 inches of snow. Yep. Uh, but uh, the Cardinals and their Northwest Suburban Conference uh, opponents are going to be at North Fork on Thursday for a nine-hole match. Uh, and then we'll be back at North Fork on Saturday uh, to play a full 18 uh, as long as everything goes well. Uh, girls golf team. Uh, is scheduled to open the season at Bunker uh, Hills against Centennial on Thursday and then be at Anoka on Friday. And finally, the girls lacrosse team, who we were hoping to see in action on Monday this week. We'll get them eventually. Um, they are hoping to have back-to-back -back home games on Wednesday and Friday with a visit from the Armstrong Falcons on Wednesday and the Spring Lake Park Panthers on Friday. Actually, Wednesday Wednesday did get changed over to Armstrong. Okay. So they've they got are turf. hoping to be at Armstrong on yeah. Wednesday and hosting Spring Lake Park <laughs> on Friday. Did I get anything else wrong? No, I think no, you didn't get it wrong. You just didn't know. Okay. Yeah. 
I go by what the what the Northwest Suburban Conference website was just changed uh, says. Yep. So just changed. That's why I have you around. Yep. So we hope to get more action in for you here on sports uh, on CTN sports coverage wise. We're going to be there for baseball on Thursday. Fingers crossed, knock on wood. We're going to be there on Saturday afternoon when they welcome the Hornets from Edina. And then we hope to see the softball team in action against Armstrong on Tuesday of next week against the Armstrong Falcons. That's going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us, continuing to support everything we do here at CTN. For the entire crew, including Howie Shapiro, I'm Joe Young. Say goodnight.